So maybe V-Ray is too expensive or too hard to learn or too slow. Maybe UE5 is just too hard to learn, too big, too cumbersome. We know it's not too expensive, but maybe those just aren't options for you. Perhaps D5, the new kid on the block, is the way to go? We will examine. First of all, the lighting looks pretty awesome in here. This is not bad. Let's mess with the lighting. Oh yeah, that's cool. Should I put a cow in? Ooh, a gray wolf. Who's using these assets? <laughs> I'd say this is probably even easier to use than twin motion. Amazingly. So in making all my videos about software and workflows, I've gotten a lot of comments about D5 render. Well, now's your chance, comment guy, to get a video just for you. So I'm gonna go into D5 having never used it before and just start a project. I'm gonna bring in a model I've already got and start trying to render it in D5. So we're gonna see how that goes. I will say that at first glance, D5 seems to fit into the part of my workflow that I describe as fast iterations. So you can see that in my workflow video, how I have these different elements in my workflow that I need, and this is the one, this is one that could fill the fast iterations slot for me. But is it good enough to do that? I mean, it's got competition. It has Lumion to compete with. It has Twin Motion. It even has Vantage, which I've also made a video about that I like quite a bit. So stay tuned we'll see how it goes in d5 with this project i'm about to start and we'll see if it's good enough to work its way into my professional workflow give me a like if you think d5 is going to be good enough to make the cut okay i'm going to test out this d5 render all i'm doing so far well i tried one thing so far and that is load the plugin for d5 into 3ds max so i can have a direct link and export via their proprietary file. And that broke my 3DS Max. I don't know why. Might be my version. Not sure what's going on with that, but it made it so nothing works. So I'm now in 3DS Max 2023. And uh, I'm going to just take a standard material FBX and export it because D5 can actually import FBX directly. So I'm just gonna do this, select everything, and export selected. I'm gonna make this model available for you to download as well. So I'll just put the link in the description and you can download this and try it in D5 Render as well. So it's nice to have a model to use and we'll see how it works out. And also I'd love to see what you guys create with it. So uh, yeah, download it for free, check it out, experiment with it yourself. Okay, that's done. I think we're done with the max part. Let's get D5 open. Okay, let's go with new. Give me some hints down here. Okay, great. Oh, and the beginner's guide. I don't want that. When you're a pro, you can skip the beginner guide. Skip the beginner guide. That's a pro tip for you. But I don't know about don't show again. I might need this later. Anyway, let's import our house. Comes down here. Oh, it looks like it's loading still. This UI looks pretty clean, pretty simple. Definitely has kind of a Vantage feel to it, right? If you've used Chaos Vantage, looks like we have controls for environment and post-processing effects, I'm guessing, over here. And then our assets are all gonna be over here, it looks like. Easy so far. This thing is done loading. Ah, okay, so it's here. Cool, uh, no materials? How do I get around in here? Okay, I should have read the beginner's guide. Whatever. Skip the beginner guide. Okay, so the navigation works like a GUI 4. I've used so many programs, I don't even know which program does what anymore and how they navigate in there, but the navigation in here is the WSD buttons. Okay, so typical real-time navigation, I think. Cool, uh, no materials. That's a bummer. Why? FBX should be able to export standard materials. Let me look into this real quick. Okay, so I found out online. This doesn't support bringing in materials. Maybe the, the the link does, but like I said, the link broke my computer. So that's that's a problem. It didn't break my computer, it broke my 3DS Max. 
Okay, so we're gonna move forward with this. Just going for it. No materials, we're gonna use, that's a good opportunity to check out all the assets in here, which are in this big button that says assets maybe, yeah. So let's just use the materials that are supplied and start applying them to my FBX. And you can do the same if you download the model, follow along, cool. Okay, how do I not be in the picker mode anymore? You think I would have known this if I actually used the, what if I'd used that beginner guide? I'd probably know everything already. Skip the beginner guide. I don't wanna select this, maybe I can't. Maybe I can't select this item individually. Yeah, it just brings it in as one chunk. First of all, the lighting looks pretty awesome in here. This is not bad. Let's mess with the lighting. Oh yeah, that's cool. Actually, like, being inside and having this much natural light, like filling the inside with global illumination, that's pretty good. That's cool. Okay, but what I was saying is this model is created for Unreal Engine FBX. So like old school, before Datasmith existed probably. So you bring in the whole thing, but then you bring in individual objects at zero, zero, all at zero, zero. So these furniture items could be grabbed and the pivot would stay in the right place and you can move it around, place it. Anyway, so in this one, that's not working in the same way. So keep that in mind. So interestingly, everything is divided up by material, basically. So when I, if I have the material assigned in 3ds Max, then it is all, I wish my materials would come across. My materials in 3ds Max are better. These are nice PBR materials though. So what happens is everything is divided up by a material. So if I apply glass to this object, all the glass in the scene will then get the glass. Okay, so it's divided by material. But here I wanna change like the mapping, but only for this one, so I'm sure I have to apply a different material here. Stretch one by one, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. And that's that, that's being caused by, uh, actually I didn't have to change the other material. That's kind of cool. And I can rotate it, nice. So that's being caused by real world mapping in, in 3ds Max versus just one by one tiles. And that's a common thing you run into with real time if you are uh, using any other real time software or whatever, that's, that's common. Every single water is pro only, as if only pros can use water. I will use a glass for the water then. <laughs> yeah, sure, that works. And of course I can adjust it anyway, like here, you know. The only thing that would be missing is like a normal map to add some ripple in there. It's a perfectly calm day though. Man, I can't find anything in here. Where's my concrete? There it is. I don't know where it fits in and down here, but... Ew, not that kind. Well, let's adjust it. Like, turn the normal way down. Is that doing anything? Let's try this rough concrete. Better. The tiling again. Anything I use real world on in Max is... The tiling is way off. Keep that in mind. It doesn't look like concrete. That's weak. I'm gonna get this white concrete stuff for the walls of the house itself and over here too. So this one.
Let's add some some objects now. Okay, let's mess with the camera a little bit. Too wide angle, right? Okay, like I'm liking that better already. I like this. Back in the bushes. I'm going back here. I'm going to import this by itself. Export. Should put a cow in. Oh, a gray wolf. Who's using these assets? <laughs> That's a pro one. The dead deer, the dead buck laying on the ground. You gotta, you gotta pay for the privilege of using that. Okay. Okay, let's keep going here. Let's mess with the lighting. I do like the intuitive nature of all this stuff because it takes the technical aspect out of the rendering and you're just kind of designing a, an image, an illustration. Wind, I assume that that's going to affect the trees, right? Especially if we animate, animate it. Precipitation. Okay, if you've used twin motion before, this is all very twin motion-y, right? Where you can just change the weather, the lighting, all that kind of stuff, change the seasons. I'd say this is probably even easier to use than twin motion. Amazingly. So far, the results look very similar, I would say, in quality. The asset libraries are very similar in quality. That's what I think. What do you guys think? So one awesome thing about the rendering here is that you can totally, it totally generates render channels, which is super awesome. Render channels are very useful when you're going to do post-processing, but not all of these real-time softwares have that. So keep that in mind. That's a big plus of D5. You might notice that animating in D5 is almost exactly like Vantage, where you pick a camera angle and save it as a scene, and then you just tell it how long you want that transition between them to be. Super simple and really clean. The result is great. 
So my basic analysis is that D5 is easy and it's fast. So there's basically no learning curve. As you saw, I just jumped right in and was able to kind of complete a project that I think was acceptably good in quality. So basically no learning curve and real-time results, fast and easy. And of course, this fills an important need in any ArcBiz workflow, right? The quality is good enough to communicate the design, and that's an important part. Personally, since I already know V-Ray, Vantage is going to give me better results, probably. That's in my opinion. But not everyone can afford V-Ray. Not everyone knows how to use V-Ray, and it can be difficult or daunting. So if I was just a guy who only modeled in SketchUp and needed some way to turn my SketchUp models into renderings, that's where something like D5 could really come in handy. So the other tools that it compares to very closely, in my mind, is Twinmotion. Okay, Twinmotion fills the same hole in my workflow. And I would say that the quality of the renderings and the quality of the library and assets are very similar, similar between D5 and Twinmotion. Twinmotion has a few advantages to me that I would like to be able to use. And that is the fact that it can export to a VR walkthrough. That's cool. That's a very nice advantage to have over D5. And also it has the path tracer built in. It has the, tra the path tracer built in, which enables you to, to add a little bit more realism. It does real ray tracing essentially, and can give you quite realistic results if you use the path tracer which is built in there. Not real time, but you still have the option to do something more realistic. I should also mention here the things that I very much like about D5 and the thing that really stands out is the interface, which I love, super easy, super intuitive. And like you saw, without using a beginner guide, I figured it out pretty quick, reasonably quick. The library is awesome. It even has a gray wolf pup in there in case you need that in your rendering. But in all seriousness, it has the things that you need. I think with Live Link, it could be extremely useful. And the fact that they're trying to develop ways to link backwards too, that would be huge, obviously. And the other thing is that the price is right. It has a tiered system, so you can get it for cheap, use it for cheap, or you can pay more to have access to more pro assets like the dead buck that everyone needs in any professional rendering. You can use the water materials and things like that. So I like that it's adaptable and the price can be right for everybody. That's a great thing. Overall, I think D5 is totally solid. You saw that I was able to go from zero to complete rendering in pretty much no time at all. And I could take that and animate it. I can take that and add more entourage. I can update the model in place if I want, remodel it in Max and re-import it to do a different design iteration. Do all sorts of things with this and it just is easy and intuitive and it works great. So that's my analysis of D5. If it's the kind of program you're looking for where you can quickly turn your basic models into kind of a finished rendering with reasonably good quality, and in a very fast amount of time, then D5 is totally solid. And if the pricing's right, then this could be the tool for you. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Comment. Let me know what you think of D5 and what else you want me to learn about. And give me a like if you thought this information was useful. Thanks for watching.